Welcome to the another Next.js video in which we will discuss about the data fetching of the Next.js. So we will see and we will explore some of the options of the data fetching and how we can use the cache to optimize our application. So without wasting much time, let's get started into the application. So here you can see I'm into the VS code. So you can see earlier we created a couple of videos regarding the Next.js. So we created some projects like we created a CRUD API. So we created a REST API with the Next.js in which we added the CRUD functionalities. Then we moved on and then we created a full stack application with the Next.js and there we used the Prisma, we have used the MongoDB as well, we have used the server components, the Tailwind as well. So there are a couple of things that we created with the full stack application. And then we moved on and then we created a video in which we showcase some of the differences of the server and the client components of the Next.js and how to use them both and how to create the server on the client components. So now this time we'll be focusing on the data fetching part of the Next.js so you can see we already have created this application. So we have the data patching folder, we have the my app directory and inside that you can see I have the page.tsx file and there you can see I'm fetching some data from an API. So you can see we have the const response await fetch. So we are fetching the data from an API which is the worldtimeapi.org and if we move on to the website of the world time API. So you can see this is the website of the world time API which is providing us a free API to use. So you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just fetching some data and then you can see we have a property of the date time inside the response. Then I'm converting the date time to the actual date with the new date constructor and I'm converting the new date to the local time string. So you will be seeing some amazing things here. So let's wait for it. So you can see now the current time which is being fetched is the 858 and the 11 seconds and the current time that we have is the exact time that we have. So you can see 858 but once you refresh this browser once again so you can see still you get the 858 and the 11 seconds and then you can see if it would be 859 as well and still you will see the 858 11. So because the next year's by default caches your entire data if you use the fetch. So if you use the fetch without any options available with the cache. So the next year's by default caches your data for the infinite time. So you won't be seeing the new data every time you hit a new request. So even it would be 858, 859 or any time after that. So your application would be entirely cached for a lifetime. So you can see that's how the next year's work. So you can see the default options of the next year's if you use the fetch. So your data would be fetched entirely for indefinite time. And then you can see if you want to use another options for the cache, like you can add some options here as well. You can have some options and then you use the cache. So here you can see there are a couple of options with the cache. So if you use the default, then the default one would be cached. So you can see now this time the code has been changed and this time you can see now the current time is the 8.59.21 and now it won't be changed. So if you refresh this application, so you can see every time you will be seeing this data only. So if you create the build of this application and if you deploy this application to the production, so every time you will be seeing only the static data which will be fetched only first time. So the data won't be updated because you have used the cache option as the default or by default it is available with the fetch. But if you use a different option here, like suppose if you use the no store. So you can see once you move on to the application, so you can see you now you have the current time. Now you have the 9 p.m. And then you can see once you refresh. So every time you refresh, you will be seeing the exact current data. So you can see that is a difference between using the cache of the default and the no store. So with the cache no store. Now the cache won't be stored inside your Next.js server. So there won't be any cache. So every time you hit a refresh or every time the application reloads, so you will be seeing the exact current time with this API. So that's how the cache works. And there's another option available with the cache if you want to remove that. And if you use the revalidate option and for the revalidate, you won't be needing to use the cache over there. So you need to use it the next. So it is available inside the next and the next JS has extended the fetch function to add its own features. So you can see if you use the revalidate over there. So revalidate that means equals to suppose I have given the number of the 10. So what it will do. So after every 10 seconds it will revalidate the entire cache. So once the application builds and application is deployed. So once the application is reloaded then you will be seeing the same data and after only 10 seconds. So once an application is refreshed, then only you will be seeing the new data. So again, if I show you an example, if I reload this application, so you will see now I am seeing this 9.01 PM. 
but you can see after that if i now refresh this application so you can see now if i now refresh this application every time so till the 10 seconds have been passed so now i won't be seeing the new data so only after 10 seconds the next js will revalidate the entire cache and then i'll be seeing the new data over there so you can see after 10 seconds now you will be seeing the 1038 that's how the next js works so there are a couple of options available with the cache with the next js so these are the options which I wanted to show you and now let's move on to the PPT to discuss more about this. So now you have seen some amazing things with the Next.js about the cache inside the Next.js that how the cache works. So let's see more about them in the detail. So you can see here are a couple of cache options which are available with the Next.js version 13. So first that we have is a force cache and then we have the default. So these two options are almost similar. But you can see if we see other options, so you can see the duration of the cache that they store is indefinitely. So permanently your server would be cached for that data. And if we see the explanation, so this resource will be cached indefinitely. So you won't be seeing the new data inside that. So that's how the cache options of the default and the post cache work. And if we see the use case, so if you have some static images in your website or you have some static text, like suppose every website has some about us page or a contact form or they have some home page as well. So you can store some of the images as the cache. You can have the cache as the force cache. So that image will be available inside the cache for the entire time permanently. So that's how the force cache and the default options work. And then you have the cache options. So if you have the cache options of the no store or no cache, then the cache won't be stored inside our application. So cache won't be stored inside our application and if we see the explanation so this prevents storing the cache inside our application so every time you hit refresh or every time you reload this application so you will be seeing the brand new data so that's how it works and if we see the use case of this like if you want to fetch the data like you want to create an application to reflect the current score of a match like if you are seeing a football match and you want to just reflect the current score then you will be using this option so every time you hit on the refresh so you will be seeing the latest score of a team and then if we have a third options we have the cache options of the revalidate so what revalidate means so we have already seen that so it caches the data for an amount of time so for an amount of time suppose 10 seconds 20 seconds or you can define the amount of 100 seconds as well so after that you will be seeing the new data so until that you will you will be seeing the old data but after the 10 seconds or a specified duration passes then you will be seeing the entire new data for your website and if we see the explanation again i have already explained that so it is used to specify the lifetime of a cache until the new one is created and if we see the use case like if you want to refresh something after an interval and if you don't want to overload your application then this option would be good so it will revalidate your application after a couple of seconds that you want to specify so that's it for this video. So I hope you have liked that video and you found this video interesting. So we create the videos which are very helpful for you. Like suppose the month stack, the JavaScript projects. And currently we are focusing on the next year's version 13 in which we are publishing a couple of videos on the next year's like how to create the APIs or how to create the full stack applications, the server and the client components. And currently we are recording the data fetching as well. And we are already recording a full stack project with the next year's which is an blog application with the image upload and so many things. So we'll all be posting all of the tutorials on this channel. So if you found the content helpful, then you can please like the video, then you can subscribe to the channel as well. And if you have any question, then you can please comment down on the video or you can also discuss on the discord as well. So that's it for this video. So thanks for watching and have a great day.